Hi and welcome to this Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to look at a number of features in Onshape which include shell, scale and draft. And as you can see on the screen there's a number of activities or challenges we're going to work through. So the first challenge we're going to look at is shell in the top right hand corner. And as you can see there are a few different options okay, with the shell feature. So we're going to look at how you can create an inside and outside shell. And we're also going to look at, which might be more important, when and where a shell should be used in a part design. So on screen, we've got a number of different tabs on the bottom. So this one here I've got on screen shows us an overview of the different activities. And you can see there's the links to the different YouTube tutorials. So you can click on those and access the online tutorials. You've also got a tab here which gives you a quick overview of different uh, tutorials and resources that are available on different platforms. You've got the file, which we're going to apply the different features to today. And we've also got a reference model here, as you can see on the screen. You can see on this design, we've got a basic sort of cube, which has got a boss or an extrude on this side here. We've then got a, an extruded cut going in and we've applied a shell as you can see here. So what we're going to do is, if we have a quick look at the size of this shell, so we're using a two and a half millimeter shell, so that's fine. If we go into the tutorial and we have a look at this, what we've got here is a part that has not been shelled out. So the shell feature could be found at the top here and you can select that. And you can see we've got a number of different options. So the first option here is hollow. So what that does, it shells out a design, okay, but does it remove any surfaces or features? So if we click on hollow, it says part to hollow, and we can click down here and apply a two and a half millimeter shell on the inside and green tick that. Now you might be thinking that hasn't done anything. Okay, it has saved it here. And if you select it, it gives you a bit of a preview there. And you can also right click on that face Okay, go sectional, drag that, and as you can see, it has shelled that out and created a hollow, okay, part, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do is just going to delete that, and I'm going to go into shell again. So that's the first option done. So if you want to complete a hollow with design out, you can select that option. What we might want to do is uh, remove a face. So if we click on this top section here, we've got a two and a half okay, mil thickness. And if we go from the top view, when we change this size here and click, you'll notice that thickness changes. There you go to five millimeters. And if we click two and a half millimeters again, okay, again, that will update automatically. When you're adding a shell in the timeline where it is at the moment, it does take into consideration fillets. So if you filleted the outside, okay, it will then take into consideration those and work out the fillets on the inside and it will also go around particular features as you can see there that those particular bosses or extrudes if you click uh, on this arrow here it flips the orientation or the direction of the shell so rather than on the inside it'll apply that on the outside now that might be what you want but the issue with applying the shell on the outside of an object is then you lose your external dimensions or it increases your external dimensions by the thickness. So for example, if you've defined this cube to be a certain size and you apply that shell on the outside, it's then going to get gradually bigger. So you've got to take that in consideration if you're using say this part in an assembly or another future okay, design. So what we're gonna do is just gonna save that there what you can see it's just removed okay that face you do have the option when you go back into the shell when you're applying it to select more than one face so we can remove this one as well as you can see there and we can also remove that one as well if we need to and we can update that and as you can see now I've removed three faces okay from that design so what we've covered up to now in the feature is hollow and we've also looked at adding different faces to remove those and we've also looked at changing the thickness 
and the direction of that shell. And again, you can edit any of these here by you know removing certain faces, as you can see, changing the okay dimension and direction. And you can also give this feature a name as well. So I'm just gonna click on the X to show that. Now, one thing we need to think about is when and where to use a shell. So if we go back in time slightly on the timeline, okay, you can see basically different features that have been created. So here you see there's a cube, so it's basically a square that's been extruded. We've then added this feature here. Okay, we've done a cut this time going in, and then we've applied, okay, the fillets. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the shell, okay, before, okay, the fillet. And you may have not seen what happened there, but if we go from above, okay, or actually if we zoom in on an area here, when the shell is applied after fillet, okay, it will take that fillet, okay, or that radius into account and apply one on the inside. Now the issue is if you apply a filler afterwards, so if you put the shell beforehand, okay, it does not. Now in this case, it might not make any difference because of the, the size of the filler that's been applied. Okay, but say if you apply, if I increase the size of that filler, okay, it won't apply it. All right, sometimes it might apply it and then it'll create a gap as well on the edge. So you can see here, it's not allowing me okay, to apply that, it's coming up with an error. Okay, so you do need to bear that in mind as well. So again, if I drag that forward, I've applied the shell sort of the last sort of opportunity really. Okay. Not only do you think about where to put this shell in terms of the timeline for fillets, you also need to think about the different features that you've created as well. So if we drag that shell and put it after the first extrude and drag this to go back in time, so you see what we've got here. So we've got to this cube, which is solid. It'll now be shelled out because it's remembered that top face. And now, now what we're adding, okay, is that side, okay, extrude. However, because we've applied the shell, okay, before that extrude, it does not take that into consideration. So if we look here and do a cross section, you can see it's shelled out, but then when it gets to that one, that is solid, okay? Because we've applied it, the shell afterwards. If we grab that shell and drag it after the extrude, you can then see it does take that in consideration and removes that material away from it. So again, if we come back down here in the timeline, we've then created another extrude. So we've got a hole going through there. It just pierces that okay um, edge there or that side of the shell or body and then we've got the fillet so again the fillet is afterwards so it doesn't apply the fillets on the inside and again if you grab that shell and just bring it after the extrude and then let go you'll see what, what will happen then okay so again it takes into consideration all right the distance I set there so really you want to put the shell okay towards the end Right. It does depend on your design, but that's what, um, okay, in this instance would work, for example. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.